So what I'm going to talk about is um, a plugin that I've been working on. Uh, this is in conjunction with um, some of the work that's being done with the LibHub initiative. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, this is the URL, libhub.org. Uh, essentially, this is um, some work that uh, the number of partners as well as um, the folks at uh, Zvera have started putting together to do some training as well as um, start testing some of the concepts around um, bib, frame, bib frame modeling. Uh, so what I've done is, um, in working with them, uh, have put together a plugin uh, that'll be available um, for anybody who's part of their program or working on their training who would like to be able to take your metadata, MARC metadata, EAD metadata, MODS metadata, what have you, um, and push it into the system to see how it might get modeled. Um, and represent it. So what I've done is I've, uh, it's a plugin that's private. Uh, at some point I believe that uh, the idea is that uh, this will, this workflow will become more public as the, the system is scaled up to take more content. Um, and when it does, uh, I'll post the, public, the plugin source code into uh, my GitHub account for anybody who's interested in how it works, uh, as well as making it available through the general plugins add-in tool um, and mark edit for now. Uh, if you're a part of the program and you're interested in using it, um, I'll be providing uh, some instructions for the trainers so they can know how to go get it. Um, so here's the plugin. Essentially, what I tried to do is do a couple of things. One is, um, you know, prior to putting this together um, in Mark Edit, there has been the release of these uh, Mark Next tools. This idea of being able to um, test converting metadata and seeing it represented um, using the bib frame test bed, uh, the bib frame test bed uh, modeling the data the way that the Library of Congress is proposing right now. Um, there's a link identifiers tool for being able to augment your metadata and be able to start generating med, uh, endpoints for the content. Um, what I tried to do with the plugin is to be able to start taking that con taking those concepts and putting them together. So you'll see that uh, through here you have the ability to generate endpoints. Um, so what that does is the tool will evaluate um, the bibliographic records that you're trying to upload and um, it'll look for subjects and it'll look for uh, people, corporations, um, those kind of content elements and it will look um, them up at the U.S. Library of Congress and uh, OCLC's VOF tool it will generate URIs um, and it finds them. And those URIs can then be used by other tools, uh, for example, like the HIT LibHub uh, training tool, um, to be able to start representing that data. So what I've done is I've got two sets of data. One is an EAD file. Um, it's a simple EAD file. It's one of the sample records that uh, the EAD3 folks are doing. Uh, it's one of my favorites, Salazar Slytherin. Uh, so we'll have this one that we'll upload, and we'll also upload um, this set of MARC files here. So the process is pretty straightforward. You select your file. So I'm going to grab my MARC file. Uh, the material type is MARC. I'm going to tell it to look for these endpoints and upload the data. It's what it's doing right now, there's uh, approximately 16 records, um, roughly uh, eight endpoints to look up per record. Um, so what it's doing is breaking them down, um, going out to these two services, um, trying to see what it can find, and then um, we'll generate a file that uh, the Zafera training service understands and we'll push it forward. Uh, when the service pushes it forward, it'll respond back with these, this message. One is a response URL and one is a status URL. Um, I've put the debugging information, so that's the JSON that actually comes back. Um, this is somewhat problematic at this point um, in the sense that at, at this juncture, I can't tell if the data has actually been processed correctly. Um, that actually is something that uh, uh, will come back when you go to the response URL. And so when I go here, um, if the data has been processed correctly, you end up with a page like this. If you don't have it processed correctly, you end up getting a, a diagnostic page saying that for some reason something went wrong. Um, and that's something I'm just going to have to talk to folks to see if there's uh, some messages I'm missing. So this is the training set. When you've uploaded your metadata, now you have the option to look at some different elements within the, the training set tool here, um, different views. You can take a look at um, the number of fields that are represented. Uh, so then my 16 records, you can see I had 16 records. There were 68 different 8880 fields. 
Um, so I've got my, my representations. What I'm interested in is looking at here the, the, the navigator for bibliographic works. So I have my, my works here. Um, this is where um, kind of interesting to point out. So uh, as the data gets generated, so this is a one of this is a creator element. These two marks here show um, that uh, endpoints exist. So this endpoint goes to if you look over in the lower left hand corner, it's to the Library of Congress.gov. So if I was to follow it, um, you'll see that it goes to LC's tool. Um, this one here goes to uh, the CLC's VOF representation. Uh, the interesting about thing about this is by embedding those URIs and passing them forward, potentially the system here that's collecting all this information could eventually make use of that data. Um, specifically, for example, like VOF, um, where you can get alternative forms of, of, uh, of an individual. Um, be kind of cool to pull down, say, like the uh, alternative language forms for a particular individual. Um, would love to be able to do that for subjects at some point. Uh, but if you continue to go down, you'll see that for subjects here, the subject here, you'll see that um, you have the marks. These are marked directly to the Library of Congress. Um, so you can see the authorized headings. Uh, this also is a good place to, to talk about um, uh, you know, how we, we create these endpoints. So. Um, the, the process here, uh, MarkEdit generated the data into MarkXML, uh, which means that those endpoints are being created in um, subfield zero. So if you're familiar with Mark, um, creator fields are in the 100, 110, 1xx elements. Um, there's a subfield zero that can be used to designate um, the uh, control number, or in this case, be utilized to point to the URL for where this information exists. Um, same thing for 6xx fields. Um, within the the documentation, um, there's some the documentation demonstrates ways to do this without providing URLs. Potentially using things like just raw control numbers with um, essentially a prefix in front of it to tell you um, where that data lives. Um, it would make sense to me to, to not do it that way. Uh, I'm not quite sure how how generically useful that information will be. Um, so it, for the purposes of this process, um, MarkEdit is only generating URIs. Um, and at this point, it's not deleting data that's, not, that's non-URI, but I, I'm thinking at some point, maybe into the future, that might, be a, uh, might actually be a process. Because um, at this point, none of the data that, that's been uploaded into the system um, is non-URI-based data. But if, for example, one of these markers um, was to represent non-URI data, um, at this point, within the context of the testing tool, you'd get to a, a, a page that's not found. Um, there's obviously ways you could do things with kind of localized DNS, and I suppose if you wanted to um, um, have large lookups and know where all of the various control vocabularies go, you could do that, but it seems to me that this is an easier process. Anyways, so that's kind of what happens here. And so you can see the, the data uploaded. Um, the tool also facilitates upload of non-MARC data. Um, so I can go ahead and select a, a non-MARC record. In this case, like I said, my uh, um, EAD record. And I'll go ahead and tell it that that EAD record is, it's an EAD record, and I'll go ahead and upload that information. So MarkEdit does the same thing. I, it's going ahead and generating endpoints um, for the records that are there and translating it into the file format that Zephyr is going to support and pushes it up. So this is a single record that's been generated for one record. Uh, 15 fields are generated uh, from it. Um, we've got mark 655, 600, 245, what have you. Uh, if we look at it within the navigator, um, you can see that uh, subjects are generated here, again, pointing to libraryid.gov when appropriate. Um, so. Uh, and then when um, when not appropriate, so like right here, there's not a an endpoint, so there's not one generated. So the tool um, provides that information, but that's an example of being able to take a record that is non-MARC um, and being able to send it up through the uh, through the workflow. Um, at this point, I have translations marked for uh, MARC, MARC XML, EAD, FGDC, Mods, and, and Onyx. Um, there are potentially other ones we could include into this list. Um, there are potentially other ones that you could include into this list. The list is actually configurable. Um, 
um, but uh, but for now these are the ones that uh, that I've provided. Um, one thing of note, uh, and this is this is possibly something that uh, uh, again, that maybe is in an error message that I'm not seeing. Uh, during my testing, I found that um, when pushing data up, uh, that uh, I'm not positive, but I think there might be some, some data elements that are being looked for, and when they're not there, there are some problems. Um, I have a, a sample EAD file that causes that issue. Um, when it pushes up, it gives you back an error. Um, in fact, um, we can show what that looks like really quick. Um, when when an error occurs, uh, what that looks like. So um, this right here, go ahead and put this back. So this right here is an EAD file that I pulled down um, from uh, University of Michigan. The data when it's translated um, is there are some missing elements um, through the style sheet that, that gets used. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just show you what this looks like in Mark. So we'll translate this into a Mark record so we can look at it really fast. And it's going to be translated from EAD to Mark. We'll translate that record. And then we will take that record into Mark so we can look at it. So if you look at the translation, you'll see that there are some, some elements that are that, that might normally be there, but for some reason aren't, um, just because the, the translation doesn't create them. I'm not sure if there's something that maybe from here is missing um, or what causes the problem. Um, but if I take this record, at least the last time I did it, if I take this record and I try and push this up using the same process, EAD record, and I'll go ahead and endpoint it up and try and push the data up. I get back the same URL responses, but when I follow them, um, I get back a, a piece of information that says that it's an unable to translate the uh, bib frame record. So I'm not quite sure what's happening here um, in terms of uh, what the problem is. I need to, to follow up um, with the, uh, the Link Hub, the, the LibHub folks, to see if there's some kind of a status message to help out. Um, so we figure out what's gone on, um, or if there are some, some data elements that must be present in order for it to work. Um, but when there's an issue uh, with data being pushed up, and I think that that's probably going to happen um, when you're dealing with non-MARC data um, rather than, than MARC data, um, this is the kind of message that, that ends up showing up. And, and then we just have to figure out uh, uh, why those, those problems are there. Uh, but anyways, that's the plugin. Um, it's uh, like I said. For for now, it's been um, uh, it's been created uh, primarily um, as a workflow tool. No, excuse me, a workflow tool um, for folks who are going through um, the uh, the the part of the LibHub program and going through the training there. Um, hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to. I'll be able to extend it to a wider group of people. Um, and actually, hopefully, at some point, maybe we'll be able to extend it to other implementations, um, uh, other linked data training implementations. So uh, this is particularly uh, Zafara's implementation. The model is slightly different, uh, actually quite a bit different than the Library of Congress's um, output that gets generated. So uh, maybe at some point when um, the Library of Congress moves to having um, some kind of a tool for inputting uh, or ingesting data in the same way, the tool will be able to support multiple uh, workflows and, um, and data deposits. Uh, but that'll be something that we'll look forward to uh, as we go along. If you have any questions, um, feel free to contact me um, or, um, yeah, contact me. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks.